no growth that happens in comfort zones. Absolutely not. So you might feel like you're doing enough, but I thought you want more. And you can say that to yourself, I thought you want more. But I'm not doing more, how am I supposed to get more? You gotta do more, you gotta put more in to get more out. It's just the way it is. go ahead and jump straight into today's tutorial as you can see we are doing the mud skin fade and we're basically um, gonna go ahead and add enhancements on my client's entire haircut so first things first so basically I, I brush my client's hair out already and now what we are gonna go ahead and do is grab our wall designers and what we are going to do right now is set in our first initial guideline as you can see my first guideline is That's aligned enough, with my client's That's eyebrow enough. so I'm gonna make sure that my guideline is even on both sides as well as the back of my client's head and it's always good to take a few steps back just to make sure that your guidelines are even This is a really good client of mine, so you'll notice throughout the, the video that um, there is a lot of talking happening. So next off, um, I'm gonna go ahead with no guard, level open, still using my wild designers. And we're gonna set in our next guideline of about an inch, because we have more than enough room to work with, we'll go ahead and set in our guideline with, um, with the width of about an inch make sure that it is consistent and even right throughout so next of what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and basically um, work out our first initial guideline so we're gonna start blending it out and as you can That's see enough. as you can That's see enough. I am adjusting my clopper slightly and what we will do is we'll continuously adjust our lever until we reach back to our lever being closed entirely and then what we will do is we'll just go ahead and follow those exact same steps at the back as well as the other side and i just want to give a big shout out to everyone that has been supporting the channel if you are a regular viewer i'm sure you guys do know that i am giving away a kilopa at 300 subscribers so we are at 282 so there's really not a long way to go so go ahead and tell your friends hit the subscribe button definitely hit the subscribe button and once i drop the info on how to enter to win the clipper it could be your lucky opportunity and you could end up with a new set of clippers And once we're happy with um, the way that our fade starting to look, we got rid of our first initial guideline. What we'll go ahead and do is grab our number one That's guard enough, and with our level That's open, enough. we will be setting in our next guideline. And as you can see with this guideline, I am setting it, I am setting it in at about an inch. Because with this fade, I really want you to see the, um, the transition. So I really want to spread the fade out. Um, yeah, I just, I just like, you know, this really helps the fade pop in this, with this specific client, actually, let me rather say. And yeah, so what I am gonna go ahead and do is once I feel comfortable with the length, I'll go ahead and close my lever and I'll start softening up the guideline as well. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna follow that exact same steps at the back as well as the other side. That's enough, Pluto. That's and enough. as you can see over there, um, because of my client's crown, where it is positioned, in um, in certain instances you have to just turn your clipper or adjust the way that you are cutting, just to make sure that you are cutting against the grain. Um, that way, it makes um, it, it's a um, it's a better way to make sure that you get the hair as even as possible. And as you 
can see I'm setting in my first guideline and just to save time once I am happy with the length I go ahead and close my lever and I basically start softening up the, um, the bottom arch guideline over there. Next off I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 0.5 guard Starting off with my lever open, we we'll go ahead and work on that bottom guideline over there. And once we are comfortable with the length, then you'll see that uh, your clip, uh, your machine isn't cutting any hair off. You'll go ahead and close your lever. You consistently use a flick motion and just make sure if you need to angle your clipper, you angle your clipper to make sure that you are cutting against the grain to get the as even as possible. And with those steps, the exact same as the previous steps, fall, um, do the exact same steps for the back as well as the other side. And you'll notice there's some points where I actually take my 0.5 guard off because it isn't cutting uh, much here. So what I do is I just pop my 0.5 guard off with my lever open and I basically just detail um, and I adjust my lever if need be. But um, it is good to jump back and forth between cards if need be just to make sure that you get the best and the crispiest fade possible or let me rather say blurriest fade possible So next off, I'm moving back to my number one guard. As out, Pluto. As and as you can see, I am cutting with the grain. So all you're gonna do right now is I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna even the out. And like I said, this is a really good client of mine. So you know, I really wanted to showcase this cut. And basically, we got lost in conversation, so I wasn't cutting with my usual steps. And as you can see, I have my one guard on. I still have my one guard on and I'm cutting against the grain now and all I'm doing is I'm basically blending in the sides with the top so I'm starting off with my lever open so we're just softening that harsh guideline and then once I am comfortable I go ahead and I close my lever and yeah like I was saying yeah because of I'm getting lost in conversation um, I ended up using different steps or different method let me rather say to cut my client uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what method you use, um, as long as you get the same end results, uh, that's most important. And over here you can see, I took my number one guard, lever closed, made sure that I cut down with the grain, as you can see over there. And then once I am happy with the length, all I'm doing is I'm blending in the sides with the top. So all we're doing is we're getting rid of that bulk line over there making sure that you get a very nice and very smooth transition. And basically just work the corners of your, your blades as well. Next off, we're gonna go ahead and grab our wild detailers and all we're gonna do is we're gonna deep out the bottom area over here. So as you know, I always prefer using my wild detailers when deep bulking because they really give me a very close cut, close to the skin cut and the guys really prefer it that way, you know, and also when it's a closer shave, it, uh, it really makes the hair cut pop that, um, that much more.
so ein bisschen Hilfe und du hast hier überhaupt mein Bier, right? It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. And yeah, save the day. Anyway, yeah. Managed to get it sorted. I'm just so used to cutting his sideburns off, I just went straight ahead and <laughs> I started cleaning them out. I'm um, cleaning them off. And yeah, now I'm back to my wild detailers and just focusing on the lineup. You know with the section I always start in the center, move either to the left or to the right. Um, it's really up to you. And yeah, right now we're just gonna sit back and I'm basically gonna let this line up bring the entire haircut to life. Next off we're gonna go ahead and do some razor work, grab my straight razor and yeah, apply some water to the client's forehead and go ahead and clean up um, your client's lineup with the razor, straight razor sorry. I started going to work earlier and then I leave work later. I've just been more productive than it's proper. It's paying off. It's yeah, right, it does. It does. Like I said, this is it's, it's a time for it's a time for craft now. It's a time for craft. I don't mind. I can book all of my haircuts in advance at half past six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now it's time for basically the duff now it's time for the duffical part and as you can see i, I am using bison um, semi-permanent hair dye a lot of the guys also use a neck though i will actually leave the the semi-permanent hair dye that i use as an enhancement i'll leave it in the description below and what i basically do is i apply some to the client's head and what i do is i use the brush to brush it in and with this it doesn't make it look um, as if you just plucked it on your client's head with, the br um, with brushing it in it really helps it um, look natural and some of the dye actually reaches your client's scalp and it makes his head look much fuller so right now what i am doing is i, I use wet wipes for the specific part um, it's really good to use wet wipes or a, or a wet towel i just prefer the wet wipes because they are disposable and basically it's it's like it's like an art right now so what what i'm doing is i'm basically just tapping on that dark line over there as you can see and with this it takes off just a little bit of dye at a time and in the end it really just starts looking much cleaner and it starts blending in really nicely so as you can see over there i'm just tapping with a bit more pressure and once I am a bit higher at the darker point, as you can see over there, I am tapping a bit light. I'm tapping with less pressure, let me rather say sorry. And yeah, that's all you have to do with this entire haircut is, it's basically like you are painting, painting your clients here. And as you can see over here, we are going ahead and doing the lineup. I always make sure that I leave um, the lineups for last especially the corners of um, the client's lineup so what I do do is I use the, um, the small brush over here and it's always good to just keep that wet wipe right next to you because sometimes the dye just smudges and you need to wipe it off the client's skin as quickly as possible before it actually leaves stains or any marks Once you do apply dye and once you do brush it, sometimes it smudges over the client's lineup 
so you just need to come back with your straight razor and make sure you clean up um, any smudges make sure you get that line up as pin straight as possible Basically with, with this enhancement I, I really don't like to put too much because I don't want to make it look too, um, what's the word, I don't want to make it look too fake, you know, because sometimes with this enhancement it can look as if you pasted your clients, <laughs> you pasted his haircut on, so I just like to try and make the cut look as natural as possible. So you'll notice me going back and forth, I'm always um, dabbing, trying to make sure I get uh, the lineups the fade as crisp um, as blurry as possible and now I will come back with my straight razor just to make sure that I get it line really straight now once I've got the line straight I'll come back with my wet wipe and make sure that and as you can see over there you just you just have to make sure that you blend it out to make sure you keep the haircut looking as natural as possible because once the client washes the dye off you want it to seem as if it's just his, his natural hair that's actually um, this black like nobody really should notice that your client had his hair enhanced or for example like we call it um, dyed you know so as you can see um, I'm, I'm not too shy with messing the dye over my clients over the fade it's actually good to get it over the fade and you basically you just blend it in so as you can see over there when I'm, a, when I'm at lower areas or lower points, let me rather say I do apply more pressure but once I am at the darker or the higher points, I, I, rather, I tend to dab much, much lighter. I don't put as much pressure when I am dabbing in the darker areas. And yeah, it's all the same steps that you follow, the front, the back as well as the other side. And as you can see, all I do is I apply a good amount of hair dye at the top and what I do do is I distribute it throughout so what I'll do is I'll come through with my brush just make sure you do have a spare brush this shouldn't be the brush that you use regularly for all your clients so as you can see what I do is I brush it I mess it all over the fade and make sure that it does go on the skin and as you can see I apply a lot of pressure at the bottom and as soon as I reach a bit of a higher point over there actually good to like let it dry and then wash your clients here before letting them go but uh, my client was in a rush and we were already at the shop super early in the morning he needed to get some things done so as soon as we were done with the cut he had to rush straight out and once he got home getting done for the day he had his hair washed but nevertheless the cut still looked fresh just would have been cool to show an after uh, a shot of the haircut once it's once the hair announcements have been washed off. So as you can see, this is what Mr. Angus looked like before we got the cut in, before we applied all the enhancements, and this is what Mr. Angus looked like once we were done with the haircut. As you can see, he looks super fresh. He was super happy with his haircut. And guys, as you know. If you are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Definitely smash the like and most importantly hit the, notifi hit the notification bell. Interact with me in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about the content. Until the next video, peace.